So today I'm going to talk about linking. There's two main reasons to link files. One is performance uh, seen here. So basically I'm um, just copy and pasting 5,000 trees here. There's, there's a limit at some point, but the limit is way f further back than without linking. So another main benefit, of course, is having one location with all your assets. So let's say you've got a client project and there's multiple rooms you're rendering, like architectural rendering, and then the client wants a red chair instead of a blue chair, which is usually no problem because if you have an instance in the project, of course, you change the color of the material and it's going to change it project wide. But now imagine you have multiple projects with multiple houses and they all have this chair and suddenly the chair has to be blue instead of red. So now you would have to change it per project, but then you mess up the color and maybe suddenly it has to be purple and you have to do the whole thing again. So that's where um, linking comes in. So you've got one location where this chair is and if you change the color there, it's going to change everywhere where this file is linked. So it's an instance, but over projects. It's not just per project, it's over multiple projects. It's super global. And you can link anything really. You can link uh, objects, you can link collections, you can link materials, you can really link anything. Um, so yeah, we're just going to jump in right into Blender. Um, I'm just going to create the standard cube. This is going to be our room, so I'm going to scale it up. Uh, room is usually 2.8 meters high. Of course, on a client project, you're going to take the real number. Um, so I'm just going to create uh, two windows real quick. Just intrude them, extrude them, delete the windows so there's opening for the light. Um, now I'm just going to move over this wall. There's no real point in doing this, but I can just sleep better at night when the wall is closer to the window. So I'm going to create a camera as well. I'm just going to move it so it looks nice. A popular lens for close-ups in architectural photography is 28 millimeters. If you want a full room, uh, you're going to use around 18 millimeters, maybe 20 millimeters. Always depends. You just got to play around with it. But try to stick with real camera lenses because it will look way more realistic than if you use a free-handed value. So I often use free-handed values, as you can see, but this is a value I never freehand. So I always use real lenses. So I've got a lot of lenses at home as well because I also do photography. So I always recreate my real lenses, basically. So that's one key factor on creating realistic architectural scenes. Once I set my focal length, I'm just going to... Um, straighten out my camera this is very important as well because in architecture you always need ver or you don't need but you should always use vertical lines because it just looks way more professional way more not realistic but just clean basically so you should always just do that that's just like if you want to remember any rule about architecture it's definitely keeping vertical lines in any of your renderings or uh, photos now i'm just gonna uh, drop in a sunlight real quick just adjust it so the thing which is too fake though, is the white sunlight. There's no sunlight that is white. There's actually no light source in general that is white really. Uh, so we're just gonna add a color. We're not gonna add any color. We're gonna add a black body node to the uh, color. We're gonna set a temperature. We're also not gonna set any temperature. This is also one of the things I always do realistically and don't freehand. So here's a table you can check out where you quickly can find real values of real light sources. So it doesn't have to be like spot on, but definitely kind of around these numbers and your scenes will look way more realistic. So now I'm just going to jump in. I'm going to do a quick render. I'm noticing this room is super white. So I'm just going to add a floor real quick, add two materials, a wall material and a floor material. Just hop into the node editor real quick, or now it's called shader editor. Uh, add an image node, add it to the base color. Um, you don't really need a normal map or roughness map. Usually really a base color image of the wood works just fine. So I'm just gonna add it real quick. Render, now you see the tiling is way off. So I'm just gonna add a mapping node and a coordinates node real quick. But also here, I'm just gonna freehand this on a real client project, images, of textures usually are one by one or two by two meters and you should always keep this right in blender and use realistic values to have a realistic render so this is a thing i'm you should always do i'm just uh free handing it real quick for this tutorial but always keep this in mind this is a thing a lot of people don't do but you should always use real world values so once i free handed this texture just gonna render real quick 
So it looks pretty nice. Just gonna do a real render real quick with F12. So what I'm noticing here is the floorboard is missing and I can only sleep well with a nice floorboard in my architectural scene. So I'm just gonna create one real quick. It's not really necessary for this tutorial, but I just, I just had to do it. So now the scene looks way nicer. So now we're gonna jump into our link file. The link file is nothing else than just a normal Blender project, a dot .blend Blender project. Um, but the key difference is this is going to be your general global location of all your assets. But it's just a dot .blend file. So don't get confused on having a, don't get confused that a link file is a different type of dot blend. It's really a, just a dot blend. I'm just going to copy and paste the chair real quick or the bench. I'm just going to make it red so we see it's a different bench. And what you do then is press M, create a new collection, name the collection bench red in this case, and this is what you're going to link. So you can link anything really. You can link materials, you can link objects, you can link collections, you can really link anything. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna link a collection. Uh, it's just gonna work best for this scenario. So now uh, we're gonna save it. When I save link files, I usually name them link file caps. So I never get confused on what was the link file, what was the main project. So now we're just gonna drag and drop the link file into our main project. Go to collections since we're gonna link a collection. Uh, select our red bench and you see there's an offset here. So it's important in your link file. That's why we're going to hop back into link file. Reset all locations. So just press Alt G if you've got clean assets, they're going to reset and just put them in the center of the scene. So now you see the origin is in the middle. We can rotate it just like you would expect it to rotate. So I'm just going to add some more files real quick. So we've got a kind of realistic looking architectural scene. So you just see what the workflow is, how I would do it. So I really just drag and drop like a machine. So now I'm just gonna drop in the table as well. On the table, you'll notice the board is shifted. And what you also notice is that I'm doing 3D for quite some time. And that's why I'm just rotating the table to cover up the mistake. Uh, but of course you shouldn't just cover up the mistake. You should jump back into the link file, uh, change the board so it's centered. And you'll notice you always change it in the link file, not in your main project. So if you save the link file now, it's going to refresh in all your projects where this table is linked to. So now I'm just going to revert my main project to uh, refresh all assets. And now you see the table centered and I don't have to hide any mistakes anymore. So the rendering looks quite nice. Uh, I'm just going to change the camera again, just like the floorboard. I can just sleep better at night if I do these little tweaks. So I had to do it. Uh, now just delete everything you just made. Now I'm going to show you something really cool. So I'm just going to link the tree real quick. So collections, tree. But before I show you this, I'm going to go back to the link file. I'm just going to copy and paste this tree. So I just copy and pasted it and you see it's not copy and pasting because it's a big tree. And this is really going to take a while. So in this time you can like easily just have a coffee. And really it's still not done. And this is real time. So it was really taking this long and my PC is not slow. So now finally it's finished and I just copy and pasted one tree and not 10 or 100. So now in the link file, or not in the link file, in our main project with the linked tree, you see there's no issue here. You can just copy and paste trees like there's no tomorrow. Usually for a forest, of course, you should use a particle system or hair. Uh, but just for this preview, I'm just showing like there's not a slight difference between linking and instancing. There's like a huge difference. So you can just make almost unlimited trees. So I'm making 5,000 trees here. You see the frame rate is slowly dropping, but uh, from experience, I can say that I've never needed nearly as many trees. Uh, I actually never rendered a forest before. For architecture, you just need a handful of trees, some hedges, but believe me, copy and pasting like I did in the main project is just way too slow. So like this, you're gonna save so much time and you don't have to hide objects in your scene. So usually to optimize my scene, if the frame rate is dropping, I just hide stuff. Since linking came out, there's nothing to hide. Like really, you can just have everything visible and you've got full frame rate on an old PC even. It's just way more performant. So definitely link trees, hedges, grass, like there's no way around it really. Um, and after every official project uh, that you do for a client, you just close the window 
click don't save and delete all files and shut down your PC. And that's it for today. I hope this helped. Uh, this definitely helped me a lot uh, because there was a time where I didn't know about linking and I wasn't linking like mainly in the old blender, but even in the new blender, I started linking quite late. So this is a thing you just have to do. Like this is just part of a professional workflow to optimize your workflow, save time, save a lot of time, save a lot of stress. So you just have to do it. So here it is.